Hello, Pingu. There's a very distant land where there's little to be seen but frozen wastes of ice and snow. It's called Antarctica. And on the chill Antarctic ice cap lives a young penguin whose name is Pingu. <coughs> yes, thank you, Pingu. Pingu lives with Mama and Papa in a warm and cosy house built entirely from blocks of snow and bricks of ice. One frosty day, Pingu, Mama and Papa had settled down to a penguin family's favourite meal of boiled fish, boiled potato and boiled green vegetables. Mama munched up her greens while Papa tucked into his fish and Pingu made a start on his round white potatoes. The trouble was, each time he speared a potato with his fork, it would drop off the prongs, bounce onto his plate and roll about the table. Frosty, <coughs> Pingu bashed his fork on the table <coughs> until he'd almost flattened out its prongs. Now he'd made a scoop. Brilliant! One by one, Pingu proudly scooped up his potatoes under his beak. <coughs> But Papa thought he was just mucking about. He showed Pingu how a polite penguin pierces his potato with a fork and neatly raises it to his mouth. But then Papa's own potato dropped off his fork, bounced onto his plate and rolled about the table. Pingu laughed so much he needed a good gulp of his shark's fin juice. He grabbed his straw, but then he remembered it's much more fun to blow through your straw than to suck. Mama told him to stop mucking about this minute and eat up his halibut. Pingu did as he was told. He picked up the fish by its tail, popped the whole of the halibut into his beak and sucked hard until... There was nothing left but a bare halibut-flavoured skeleton. Pingu dropped the bony remains onto his plate, jumped from his chair and dashed to his toy box. But he wasn't quick enough. Papa made Pingu come back to the table and eat up all his green vegetables. Pingu hated those boiled green vegetables. But then he had another idea. He would eat all his greens in one giant go. He grabbed his straw, stuck it into those horrid old greens and sucked them all up with one mighty suck. But he sucked so hard, his eyes spun around, his tummy turned over and he just had to dash to the bathroom. He made straight for the toilet, popped his head over the rim and out from his beak poured all those greens. <laughs> After that, Pingu felt much better. <laughs> and he whizzed over the floor to his toy box, jumped in and sorted through his toys. Bricks, boats and planes flew in all directions. Then Pingu found what he was looking for, a bouncy red rubber ball and the pump to blow it up. He asked Papa to help him. And while Pingu licked all the ice off Mama's herring-flavoured ice lolly, Papa pumped up the rubber ball. <laughs> At last, Pingu was ready for some fun. He dashed from the ice and snow house into the ice and snow outside. But just as he was about to kick off a thrilling game of football, a big wet drip dropped out of his nose, rolled down his beak and plopped into the snow. Pingu hurried back to Mama, who took out her biggest hanky and gave that nose a good hard blow. But when Pingu got back to where he'd left his ball, all he found was an empty patch of snow with a ball-shaped dent in it. Pingu was furious. He searched all round in the snow and all round his own house. And just then, a pair of particularly cheeky young penguins popped out from behind the house. 
and started playing with a red rubber ball. Yes, it was Pingu's red rubber ball, and Pingu was furious. As the two cheeky penguins threw and kicked the ball, Pingu leapt about between them, trying to catch it. Until, with one mighty effort, he finally leapt high in the air and grabbed the ball. As Pingu raced back to the safety of his own ice and snow home, the two cheeky penguins pelted him with snow. Pingu was so cross, he bent over double and rudely waggled his tail at those penguins. Then he dashed inside his front door, only to find that all the air had gone from his red rubber ball. It was as flat as a red rubber pancake. Papa was sorry for Pingu and set about mending the ball. While Pingu sought out the safest place in the whole world, he jumped into Mama's arms. Mama stroked, patted and comforted her Pingu, then laid him in his favourite swinging hammock. <laughs> Papa blew up the red rubber ball, round and bouncy once more, mended with sticking plaster. Pingu was happy again. <laughs> Pingu delivers the mail. <laughs> Far away, amidst the frozen snows of Antarctica, it's a great day in the life of a young penguin when his father first takes him out to help him in his work. So Pingu's ice and snow house was filled with excitement the morning Pingu was going to help his papa deliver the mail. Mama sang as she ironed the peak of papa's post office hat, while Pingu ate as much breakfast as quickly as he could. Papa put on his post penguin's hat, and Pingu gulped down the last mouthful of cod liver marmalade on toast. Delicious! Then he waved goodbye to Mama and followed Papa from the ice and snow house. Together they strode towards the post office. They passed the house of Mrs Pengsniff, their nosy neighbour. As usual, she was peering at them through her window. Papa greeted her politely. Pingu didn't. At the post office, Papa and Mr Pengalope, the postmaster, greeted each other politely. Then Pingu and Mr Pengalope greeted each other politely. Pingu put two parcels neatly onto the sledge. Well, that was a bit dull. So, he flicked the next parcel over his head onto the sledge. Oh, okay, many, funny, many uh -huh. Papa reminded Pingu that post penguins have to take great care with the mail. So Pingu placed the last parcel very carefully on the sledge. As soon as Papa had collected a pile of letters from Mr Pengalope, he and Pingu set off on their round. At their first call, Pingu leapt off the sledge and grabbed a parcel. Papa put his post penguin's hat on Pingu's head. But it was eight sizes too big, and the moment Pingu took a step, the hat slipped over his eyes. When Pingu straightened it, he looked almost like a real post penguin as he rang his first doorbell. Mr Pengthwaite opened the door and asked Pingu what was in his parcel. Pingu didn't know, so he bounced the parcel up and down on the snow to find out. It bounced amazingly high and Mr Pengthwaite watched in horror as the wrapping fell off his parcel. But he was all smiles when he saw the parcel contained the bouncy orange ball he'd been expecting for weeks. Pingu left Mr Pengthwaite bouncing happily. Papa had to deliver a letter to old Mr Pengagrass. It must have been sad news, 
Tears were flooding from Mr. Pengergrass's eyes. Papa comforted him. <laughs> Tears flooded from Pingu's eyes too, although he didn't really know why. But Papa comforted him anyway. Papa explained that Mr. Pengergrass's great-great-great-grandpapa had died. But Mr. Pengergrass would soon get over it, as he would now inherit his very own iceberg. Papa then sent Pingu off with a parcel for the next house. There was no reply. But Pingu had an idea. A window opened and a rather cross penguin snatched the parcel from Pingu. A post penguin should not wake a gentleman so rudely, he said. And never while he's having an after-breakfast snooze. Pingu muttered grumpily as he went to collect the next parcel from Papa. To reach the next front door, Pingu had to struggle up a long flight of icy steps. Then he could ring the bell. The door was flung open, slap into Pingu's face. The famous opera singer, Signor Pengarotti, stepped from his house. But Pingu was still hidden behind the door. So Signor Pengarotti stepped back into his house. <laughs> Pingu fingered the bit of his beak which had been bumped by the door and tried again. <laughs> This time, he remembered to jump back as once again Signor Pengarotti flung open his door. And this time, Pingu jumped out from behind the door and handed his parcel to Signor Pengarotti, who was most grateful. <laughs> At their final call, Pingu decided not to risk being bumped by any more front doors, so he stood well back and announced himself in his own way. Three baby penguins tumbled from the house, followed by their harassed mother. She was delighted to see the parcel Pingu was carrying. There was an ice lolly for each of her youngsters, an albatross-flavoured lolly, a walrus-flavoured lolly, and a whale blubber-flavoured lolly. That should keep them happy. By now, Pingu was worn out. It was time to return to the post office. <laughs> Pingu had only started telling Mr. Pengalope, the postmaster, what a fine post penguin he'd been when Papa said it was time to go home. <laughs> so off they went. Mama was delighted to see Pingu in the smart post-penguin's hat. And Papa said he really had been rather a good post-penguin. But it was the end of a hard day's work and Pingu was exhausted. All a brand new post-penguin wants at the end of a long day is a warm cuddle from his mama. And of course, that's just what Pingu got. Pingu looks after the egg. <laughs> if you're a penguin and you want to keep your ice and snow home neat and tidy, there's always housework to be done. Everybody has to lend a wing and one day, deep in the depths of the Antarctic, Pingu's papa was busy with the family wash. He opened the door of the washing machine and filled a basket with clothes and towels to be taken out to dry in the fresh air. Now, Pingu hated housework, and he was very quietly reading a comic and hoping his parents wouldn't notice him. Pingu's mama was helping papa by doing some of his knitting. 
they were making yet another of those red woolly hats Pingu doesn't like wearing. When Papa was ready to hang the washing out on the line, Mama said she'd help him. But Papa told her not to rush, and he stepped out into the snow. Mama was taking life very easily just now. And the reason for that was the penguin family were expecting a new arrival. Yes, Mama was sitting on an egg, waiting for a tiny chick to hatch out. A brother or sister for Pingu. Mama wanted Pingu to sit on the egg for a while, and she was rather cross when he didn't answer. Then she realised he couldn't hear because Pingu was listening to a record through headphones. It was about time he did something useful about the place, thought Mama. She switched off the record player, put Pingu's headphones in the cupboard and sent him across the room to where the egg nestled in its special hatching hole in the floor. Mama showed Pingu how you have to flick back your tail feathers and sit gently on the egg to keep it warm. Pingu didn't fancy this, but had a go anyway. As soon as he lowered himself onto the egg, which was nearly half the size of Pingu himself, he slid straight off. He thought that was a bit of a laugh, but Mama didn't. Again, she showed Pingu how to sit neatly on the egg. Again, Pingu tried. He stretched his legs as wide as he could and lowered himself onto the egg. He was most uncomfortable. But Mama patted his head and went to help Papa hang out the washing. Pingu was soon bored with sitting still and he pottered over to the record player to listen to his record again. <laughs> Pingu danced about the room to the music and for a while he didn't notice the egg. It started to move to the music as well. Then it grew two tiny feet, hopped from its hatching hole and began to dance about. Pingu still took no notice, so the egg marched up and tapped him on the wing. The egg wanted to play. It dashed across the room and Pingu chased after it. Then the egg danced about on the record player. Pingu tried to catch the egg in his fishing net but it jumped straight past him and knocked over a chair. Out at the washing line, Mama and Papa were making plans for their new chick. Suddenly, lumps began to appear and disappear in the walls of their ice and snow house. Papa was astonished. Inside the house, Pingu and the egg were playing on a seesaw they'd made from a shelf and some books. And the extraordinary egg was bouncing up and down from the seesaw and on and off the walls and the ceiling and making lumps appear and disappear as it bounced. The whole place was in a terrible mess. Furniture upside down, pictures askew, wool trailing everywhere. Mama and Papa hurried to see what was going on in the house. Inside, Pingu jumped onto one end of the seesaw and, as Papa reached the front door, the egg shot from the other end up through the roof and down again. Just before the egg smashed onto the floor, Papa managed to catch it in Pingu's fishing net. Mama turned off the record. Now she was worried again. She couldn't see Pingu anywhere. But out he hopped from the cupboard under the record player. Mama swept Pingu up and cuddled him. Pingu kissed Mama, and Papa returned the egg to its hatching hole and settled down on it. Both Pingu's parents had forgotten to be angry about the mess in the house. 
Mama asked Pingu if he'd be kind enough to tidy up. And Pingu had a good time flicking the chairs upright, straightening the pictures and turning the seesaw back into a bookshelf. Papa finished his knitting and presented Pingu with his new woolly hat. Pingu even remembered to thank him politely. The new arrival. <laughs> when a penguin family is waiting for a new chick to arrive, it seems ages and ages before the precious egg hatches and the fluffy bundle of joy pops out. At least, that's how it seemed to Pingu while his family were waiting for their new arrival. Hour after hour, he sat around the ice and snow house reading his comics, waiting for something to happen. <sighs> Mama worried whether the new chick would be healthy, and Papa, whose turn it was today to sit on the egg in its hatching hole, tried to keep her calm. But suddenly... Papa felt something move beneath his tail feathers. He jumped up, and sure enough, the egg was shifting about. Now Pingu was interested. Mama and Papa thought this could be it. Mama took a turn at the hatching hole. Could she feel anything? wondered Papa. <laughs> she could. She jumped up and together they watched the egg move about. Pingu stared in wonder as Papa returned to the egg and Mama looked on. Suddenly, the kettle heating on the stove started to whistle. Pingu dashed across the room to turn it off. But then the telephone began to ring, and Papa told him to hurry. It was all too much for Pingu. So Mama had to turn off the kettle and answer the telephone, before hurrying back to the hatching hole to see how Papa was getting on. But Papa was getting off. A sharp little beak had burst through the egg and stuck itself straight into Papa's bottom. There was a chick in that egg and it wanted to get out. This was the moment to call the nurse. Papa telephoned the Ice Cap Maternity Hospital. Nurse Pengagale was on her way. Pingu wanted to look out for her. He was standing on top of the ice and snow house when he saw a penguin in a nurse's uniform skiing over the snow. This was Nurse Pengagale. Pingu leant down and opened the front door so the nurse could ski straight into the house where Mama was delighted to see her. Right away, the nurse opened her bag and got to work. The egg had now been placed on a warm blanket and the nurse listened to the shell through her stethoscope. Inside, all seemed to be well. By now, of course, nobody took the slightest notice of Pingu. He wanted to know what was happening, but the grown-ups just stared at the shell. Until Papa finally told Pingu to sit down and be quiet. Pingu argued, but it was no good. It seemed Mama and Papa would only talk to Nurse Pengagale. And when Pingu tiptoed up to take a peek, Papa sent him back again. It was time for the nurse to produce her special medical teaspoon. With it, she tapped all around the shell of the egg. The nurse tapped and tapped, and Papa was getting nervous. So when Pingu sneaked up again, Papa was not at all pleased. The top of the eggshell cracked open and out popped a pair of tiny orange feet. Mama and Papa could hear the voice of their new penguin as Nurse Pengagale peeled more shell from the egg. Pingu wanted to look too. 
all of a sudden, the grown-up stepped aside and there on the blanket was a perfect fluffy chick. It was what they'd all wanted, a baby girl penguin. Pingu peered curiously at his new sister. But when he tried to have a chat with her, all she did was squirt some funny yellow stuff out of her bottom. Ugh! Pingu called the nurse. She soon cleared up the yellow stuff with a chick wipe. And then she cleaned up the chick and sent Pingu to the bathroom to throw the dirty chick wipe away. He was only too glad to flush it down the toilet. <laughs> Mama thanked Nurse Pengagale for all her help as she skied off out of the house. Back on her blanket, the baby chick kicked her little feet and flapped her tiny wings as Mama watched proudly. Then Papa set up his camera as Mama gave the chick its first bottle of milk. Pingu hurried to join them. Papa stepped from the camera and stood beside his family as the camera whirred and a bright light flashed. And for all time, the penguin family would have that cherished photo of Mama and Papa with Pingu and their fluffy new chick, Pingu's sister, who they decided to call Pinga. Pingu goes fishing. <laughs> On a crisp Antarctic morning, there's nothing a young penguin likes better than a spot of fishing. One particular crisp and fishy morning, Pingu set off with his fishing rod and bucket full of bait for his favourite fishing hole in the ice. Soon, he came to the edge of the high cliff, where he jumped aboard a handy lump of frozen snow and sledged down the winding, twisting, slippery slope, shot under an ice bridge, leapt over a snow bridge and slithered to a halt on the ice below, just beside his favourite fishing hole. He was feeling a bit dizzy from his slide down the winding, twisting slope, but the moment his head stopped spinning, Pingu picked a handful of bait from his bucket. The bait was a special frosty moss the local fish just loved, and Pingu fixed it onto the hook at the end of his fishing line. Then, with a neat flick of his rod, he cast the line into the waters of the fishing hole and settled down to wait for his first catch. <laughs> He didn't have to wait long. The fish really did love that frosty moss. With a cry of penguiny triumph, <laughs> Pingu picked a fish from his hook and dropped it onto the ice behind him. Again, he fixed some bait onto his hook. And again, he cast his line into the fishing hole. Now, just behind Pingu's bit of ice, there was another fishing hole. Out of it popped Seymour, the baby seal. He'd been watching Pingu catch his fish and his mouth had watered at the sight of his bait. Seymour loved Frosty Moss too and when he saw Pingu settle down to wait for his second fish, he had an idea. He slipped back into his own fishing hole, nipped under the ice, popped quietly up in Pingu's fishing hole grabbed the hook with the mossy bait and nipped back under the ice to his own fishing hole. As Pingu waited cheerfully for his second catch, <laughs> Seymour flapped up onto the ice with Pingu's hook and tugged hard at the fishing line. Pingu thought he'd made a second catch. As Pingu pulled and heaved and strained at his line, Seymour took the bait from the hook and gobbled it up. 
Then he stuck Pingu's first fish back onto the hook and dropped it into the water. Now Pingu found it much easier to reel in his line and hauled from the water what he thought was his second fish. Pingu picked the fish from his hook and dropped it onto the ice behind him. Seymour watched as Pingu fixed another delicious lump of frosty moss onto his hook and cast it into his fishing hole. Again, the baby seal disappeared into the water. Pingu could hardly wait for his next fish. As again, Seymour grabbed Pingu's hook, nipped back under the ice, flapped up from his own fishing hole and tugged at Pingu's line. But this time, he tugged Pingu's fishing line a bit too hard and pulled Pingu into the water. As he leapt back onto the ice, Pingu actually saw Seymour munching his frosty moss bait. Pingu was furious. Seymour had been caught out. They splashed after each other in and out of the fishing holes. As Seymour disappeared down one of the holes, Pingu quickly blocked it up with a great big piece of ice. He'd set a trap for Seymour. He took a ball of string from his bucket and tied some frosty moss bait to one end. Then he took the other end and hid behind an icy rock. Now, when Seymour popped up from the other fishing hole, he just couldn't resist Pingu's bait. He flapped across the ice after it as Pingu tugged the bait with his string. Seymour chased the sliding bait behind the icy rock. Pingu dashed out and slid another great piece of ice across the second fishing hole. Seymour was trapped. Pingu had triumphed. But of course, baby seals get frightened when they can't find water. And Seymour was desperate to dive back into one of those fishing holes. He began to cry. Pingu took pity on Seymour and he began to cry as well. He pushed aside the great big pieces of ice. And with a happy cry, Seymour leapt into the water. He was so grateful to Pingu, he caught him the hugest fish the little penguin had ever seen. Pingu was thrilled. He gave all the rest of his frosty mossy bait to Seymour. And as Pingu, with his huge fish slung across his back, staggered home up the high cliff, he and Seymour called to each other across the ice. <coughs> they both knew they'd be friends forever.